Hi. I'd like to introduce a book that was written in copyright 1968 by Dr. David Goodman, Living from Within. The Art of Appreciation in Marriage, Parenthood, Work, Growing Up, and Growing Older. It's a wonderful little book. It was, it's only 60 pages long and cost a total of $2.50 back in, 19, in, the, in the 1960s. And to give you a little introduction to Dr. David Goodman, um, quote, we draw to ourselves the good of everything we appreciate, but the evil of everything we belittle. Opening with this universal principle, Dr. David Goodman offers in Living From Within, a philosophy of life that can guide every reader to healthy, joyous living. He conjures no magic solutions to problems. Instead, he goes to the heart of human feelings to show how they may be directed towards happiness. He discusses appreciation and love in marriage, success in parenthood, the blessing of work, and appreciation as we grow older. To each subject, he brings remarkable working insights and an inspiring style that makes an art of plain talk, emphasizing life's riches. For example, he writes, besides nature, there is art, music, painting, literature, the great theme symphonies, and the heart-soothing songs. The museum canvases a glow with fancy haunting figures and scenes. Plays, stories, poems in which we may live other lives besides our own. Infinite treasures and in life's little room spread out to delight the appreciative soul. And he adds, in a statement that applies to each of us, the time to enjoy them is now. The delight of Dr. Goodman's message is that he communicates for readers of all ages and situations the vital techniques of how to enjoy. Dr. David Goodman is no stranger to appreciative living. A proud grandfather and a personable man, he is widely known as a columnist, appearing in newspapers from coast to coast. He was a Pulitzer Scholar at Columbia University and has long and varied experience as a counselor, lecturer, and writer. His several books include Guidelines for a Healthy Marriage and What's Best for Your Child and You. Now, the first chapter is titled Appreciate and You Prosper. The story is told of a philosopher who stood at the gate of an ancient city greeting travelers who wished to enter. One of them questioned him, what kind of people live in your city? The philosopher met the question with a counter question. What kind of people lived in the city from whence you came? Oh, they were very bad people, answered the traveler, cruel, deceitful, and devil worshiping. That's the kind of people who live in this city, declared the philosopher. Another traveler came by and asked the same question, to which the philosopher replied, What kind of people lived in the city from whence you came? Oh, they were very good people, answered the second traveler, kind and truthful and God-loving. That's the kind of people who live in this city, declared the philosopher. What ye seek. In the mixed pool of human nature, what we look for, we will find. There are times in our lives when we are good at the game of human relations, and then, alas, there are times for all of us when we muff the ball. But we don't have to muff the ball, because there is always something to appreciate, a core of goodness in all people. If we look for it, if we look for it, and when we find it, we can express our appreciation for it gracefully and sincerely. Then watch the other person's face light up. Watch the delight and the eagerness to work together to solve common problems grow. 
What causes this amazing transformation? The poor human ego gets such a kicking around in today's competitive society that it is grateful for any expression of admiration or regard. It hurts so to feel small. It helps so to feel big. Make people feel big and they will always act big towards you. Thus, you are in command of your human relations and always enjoy happy and fruitful associations with people, all by using the art of appreciation. A real force. Appreciation is no fanciful thing, no vague or generalized philosophy. Appreciation is a very real force. It is governed by a law almost as direct as the laws of physics. We draw to ourselves the good of everything we appreciate, but the evil of everything we belittle. If we appreciate what we have, it always becomes more. If we belittle what we have, it always becomes less. This principle is the distilled wisdom of ancient religious sages and modern practical psychologists. It explains why people who smile always have something to smile about, and people who complain something to complain about. And because of this principle, each person's fate is up to himself. Appreciate and you prosper, belittle and you lose. In a direct but subtle and subtle way, each of us decides. Large and long and learned books have been written about this theme, but a modern verse maker has summed it up with pointed aptness in a simple little jingle. Two prisoners gazed out from behind their bars. One saw the mud, the other saw the stars. In nearly all of life's situations and in nearly all people and things, we find both mud and stars. It's up to us to overlook the mud and direct our gaze to the stars. That's not always easy. And from mud to stars is a big in-between where our look usually lingers. But we can raise our sights as we cultivate the art of appreciation. Self-enriching faiths. In ancient times, certain religions built their whole philosophy around the idea of using imagination to enrich experience, to get more from life by appreciating more of life. Such ancient wisdom is still cultivated by thinkers in the East and is not unknown to thoughtful people of the Western world. We can use it too, and why shouldn't we? Truly understood and applied, it has the power to transform any dull or unhappy life into a highly satisfying existence. Universally applied, it would solve every problem of husband and wife, of parents and children, of school and society, of labor and management, and even of international relations. The art of appreciation works. It works wonderfully. Let anyone try it through one ordinary day, and that day will be different from any they have ever lived before. An ordinary day may become the promise of many better days that will make a better life. Start the day happy. One ordinary day, when you wake up, decide to be happy today. Decide it's a beautiful morning, even though it's raining. Raining mornings are beautiful in their own way, aren't they? Give your spouse an extra hug and kiss and say how happy you are for your marriage. Think yourself happy. Be glad for the hot water of your bath or shave, the comfort of your clothes, new or old. Give thanks for the pleasure of a good breakfast, the flavor of orange juice, the rich aroma of steaming coffee. Compliment your children, start them off happily on their day. At work or shopping, try this. Smile at the first 10 people you have any contact with and see what happens. Pretty good investment, wasn't it? Then try praising every good thing you come upon, saying thank you heartily for every kindness and keep it up until nightfall. Well, you had fun. You felt good. People liked you. You liked people. All in all, it was a happy day, wasn't it? That's what appreciation can do for one ordinary day. Then do it again. And if appreciation can make one day rich, pleasant, and enjoyable, why not use it every day so that every day may become rich, pleasant, and enjoyable? 
In fact, as we cultivate the use of our imagination, the great truth grows within us that people and things have value in proportion to how much we appreciate them. If we appreciate what we have, it always becomes more. If we belittle what we have, it always becomes less. This is probably the most useful law of the human mind. No wonder the wise ancients made a cult of it. Its potentialities for human happiness are limitless. It can be developed into a veritable science of life betterment. In this science, we learn to direct our imagination much as we direct a spotlight upon such aspects of our world as we choose. We focus our consciousness on the good things of life and exclude the bad. Thus, we literally control our fate, becoming finally impervious to evil and enjoying good fortune to the full. Things, Nature, and Art Things, Nature, and Art, what rewards they offer to appreciation search, appreciation that disregards the bad and seeks out the good. Let us take things first, the hundreds of things that afford us comfort and delight, a warm shower, a thick rough towel, steaming coffee, fresh bread, bacon, the earthy pig, but how heavenly he smells in the frying pan, a favorite pair of shoes, a stout coat in winter, an umbrella in the rain, lounging chairs, a roomy bed with a thick mattress and white sheets, simple everyday things, but how much our pleasure to them is increased by not taking them for granted, by turning them over on the palate of our appreciation. And nature, the woods, the sky, the sea, the plain, and the starry heavens overhead, no soul so heavy and distraught, but can an appreciation of them find healing balm. Let us take our troubles for a walk over hill and dale, through woods and fields, let us listen to the wind rustling through the leaves, the birds chirping, the cattle lowing. Let us watch with great wonder the sun's descending over the color-streaked horizon, and the evening stars steadfast twinkling in the dark blue dome of heaven. Let us release our souls to wander us, wander in free appreciation over all of this. And where are our troubles now? Besides nature, there is art, Music, painting, literature, the great themed symphonies, and the heart-soothing songs, the museum canvases aglow with fancy, haunting figures and scenes, plays, stories, poems in which we may live other lives besides our own, infinite trevor, treasures in life's little room spread out to delight the appreciative soul. The time to enjoy them is now. Improving human relations. With people, appreciation is a kindling force. People show up in new and wonderful light under our appreciation of them. They become more valuable in our eyes. They actually grow to meet our ideal of them. This is the art of human relations, an art on which volumes have been written. Yet the whole subject can be condensed into one sentence. The only way to live happily with people is to overlook their faults and admire their virtues. The false and the virtues are both real. We can't change either very much, but we can enjoy the virtues and disregard the false. This calls, to be sure, for skill in the art of human relations, a skill not too difficult to acquire once we learn the basic rules. It is a skill upon which most of our human happiness depends. Appreciation pays off. Once we learn how to play the getting along with people game, realizing how important it is to our personal happiness, we put more conscious effort into improving our human relations. In time, it becomes as easy as breathing to look for and to find the good in people, than to bring it forth by showing appreciation. Don't be self-absorbed in your dealings with people. Be alert and alive. Show interest. Give sincere praise. Then see how eager friends, relatives, and acquaintances are to reciprocate. Perhaps exceed your generosity and attention. You lead a good life when you have plenty of devoted friends. You're never lonely. 
There are always interesting things to do and pleasant people to do them with. You give and receive affection. All this you gain through practicing the art of appreciation. That's the end of the first chapter of Dr. David Goodman's book, Living from Within. And it's a book which has had a real influence in my life. And I must agree wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, I should say, with uh, Dr. Goodman. Appreciation is something that I've had to relearn recently. I retired from my nine to five job in 2014 and almost 10 years ago. And quite honestly, um, there was a period of time I was not very happy. Um, I thought that I would enjoy retirement a lot more than I did, especially because I've had a passion for uh, photography for many years prior to retirement. And I used to get um, jobs, uh, small jobs, uh, from people that I met through my work. And once I stopped working, I was no longer working with the public and meeting people. And uh, photography opportunities dried up. And COVID didn't help either, to say the least. Um, and I was focusing on, I was belittling. I was focusing on what I didn't have. And it's taken me several years now, but now I haven't given up the idea of uh, still pursuing uh, photography, uh, but I'm happier now that I've been able to appreciate all the good that I do have in my life. And we'll get into this a little bit further uh, in the next installment. Thank you for listening.